Good morning and welcome to St. Columba Gallic Church. We're going to start the service with hymn 19. O come and let us to the Lord. Hymn 19.
Whoever takes the services and Sundays are happy that uh, Agnes is so willing to do the children's address. It's one less thing for the, the preacher to, to spend time on prepa preparation. And Agnes's stories are always very appropriate. Last Sunday we were in the hall downstairs, of course, for the service. And it was only on Monday when I was in here that I realised that the story of the sermon last Sunday is actually on the wall of the hall downstairs the story of Samuel uh, being called by God and I hadn't noticed this but it was one of Agnes's many um, displays and uh, uh, it would have been he helpful to have been able to say here's one I prepared earlier but children's address is part of the service it's uh, an integral part uh, and those who know about things to do with church would have noticed that the first hymn today was actually a psalm. And that's something that is traditional in the Church of Scotland, that we start with a psalm. And of course at the Gaelic service this morning, we had four psalms. Uh, so very traditional. But we are singing hymns most of the time in the English service. So the announcements are on the pew leaflet. Unfortunately, the reason that you've got me again today is because Graham is still not back to full fitness. I'm uh, still hopeful that he'll be back with us next Sunday. Uh, Angus is going away back to Lewis, so if Graham's not here next week, we might have a problem with the Gaelic service. But uh, that's, that's the situation. So we pray for Graham and that uh, he makes a full recovery very soon. The rest of the announcements are fairly standard, apart from the one about the invitation from the McLeod family for a party after the baptism on the 10th of February. And it is important, if you're coming to that, please let Ailey know so that she can organise the catering accordingly. Now, there were no visitors last Thursday to the church, and that's quite unusual. But if you remember how bad the weather was, I suppose it's not really a surprise. But from now on, towards the summer, numbers pick up. So if you are able to come in and help, uh, just to show people around our beautiful building, that would be very helpful. The next hymn is hymn 230. It's children's hymn. When Jesus shot, saw the fishermen, it's hymn 230.
The first reading today is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting from verse 20 to 37. You will find it on page 288 of your pew Bible. Early in the morning, David left the flock with a shepherd, loaded up and set out, as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines and greeted his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance. And David heard it. When the Israelites saw the man, they all ran from him in great fear. Now the Israelites had been saying, Do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his father's family from taxes in Israel. David asked the men standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes his disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had heard been saying and told him, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. When David's oldest brother heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here and with whom did you leave those few sheep in the desert? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Now what have I done, said David? Can't I even speak? He then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter and the men answered him as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. David says to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy, and he has been fighting man from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it and re rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and the bear this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul says to David, go and the Lord be with you. Amen. Thanks to Kath Roberts and Elder for that reading. Shall we draw our hearts together in prayer? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come to you today knowing our shortcomings and all the times that we have let you down in the past week. We pray that 
you will understand that we try our best and we will try even more in the future. We come to you realizing that you are a great God, a God who sees everything, a God who knows everything, a God who has been with us and hopefully will stay with us in the future. We ask that this will be so. So in our prayers of intercession, we would pray for those less fortunate than us, for the sick and for the lonely and the bereaved. Bring your comfort to them. Especially at this time of the year, in colder weather, we pray for the homeless and for those who are on the streets. We pray and thanks for the work done by the Church of Scotland. We pray for the work of the street pastors as they minister to young people in the city centre. And we would pray for all those in authority, for the Queen, the British government, the Scottish government, local authorities and the European Parliament, all levels of administration that work for us. We pray for all those who help our people, for doctors, nurses, police, fire, and all who commit to help others while we sleep. Electricity, gas, and streets, water supplies. In our denomination, we pray for the work of evangelism that takes all of us out to those who would not usually think of the church as important. Help us always to show the love that Christ showed us. We pray for the work carried out by the Lodging House Mission, by the Well, St. Francis in the East, all supported by Glasgow Presbytery. We pray for the moderator of the General Assembly, for the moderator of Presbytery, and for all the work that goes on in committees at every level of the church. In our own congregation, we ask for your continued presence with us. Bless the members and adherents. Bless the interim moderator and our locum, the church session, the board, and the Sunday school. We bring all of our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. The next hymn is hymn 104. Come Holy Spirit, come. 104.
The second reading this morning is a continuation of the first reading on page 289 in the Pew Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 38 to 50. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armour on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bare in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked over David and saw he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out his stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. We're going to uplift the offering now. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we bring to you but a token of what you have given us. Use it to advance your kingdom. Amen. The next hymn is hymn 76, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Hymn 76.
Our lesson today came from 1 Samuel, and as we said last Sunday, Samuel, the stories of this time were 900 BC, nearly 3,000 years ago, and yet they still have relevance for us today. And probably everyone in the church has heard several sermons based on David and Goliath. So a bit of a struggle to prepare for today, to try to make it a wee bit different from what you've all heard already. So I want to try to tie up the fact that this was 900 years ago, something that obviously none of us can remember long, long, long ago, but still relevant with this message to us today. And we're in St. Columba Gallic Church, a church that started, the first church opened on the 18th of February, 1770. 18th of February, 1770. And that was in Back Cow Lone, which is now Ingram Street. And if you do the sums quickly in your head, you'll have worked out 1770. Next year is 2020. Nice easy calculation, 250 years since this church started, 250 years. And we are hoping to have all sorts of celebrations next year, although numbers are not encouraging, we're certainly not in line with what we've had in the past. The first minister of the church was Hugh McDermott, and the first church in Ingram Street sat a thousand and ninety people, which is roughly what this church is supposed to sit as well. There was a Gallic service in the forenoon, English in the afternoon, and most of us would remember that that's the way it was up until about 1997. And then the services were moved so that they're both in the morning now. A wise decision, I think. So back in the day, I was doing a wee bit of research and just having a wee look through the history of the church. There have been three histories of the church. First one in the 1920s, and one in the 1970s, one in the 1980s, and really we should be preparing one for next year, because a lot has happened since the last one was produced in 1984. Anyway, going through the history, I was intrigued to see the meetings of the managers, which is the equivalent of the Congregational Board. Congregational Board is meeting this Thursday, but not in the way that the managers met in those days. It's recorded that the managers and the seat letting committees met in the adjoining tavern. They met in the pub next door. Now, of course, we all know that Sammy Dow, the famous publican, was actually one of the managers in St. Columba. I don't know if this is why, but in 1802, the tavern keeper's bill for refreshments for the managers was 27 pounds, 18 shillings. Seems to me to be a significant amount of money. Can I hasten to add, those of you who are on the board, there will not be that sort of level of refreshments on Thursday for the congregational board. So a wee bit of history. In 1799, Norman MacLeod, who became our most famous minister, came to Glasgow from his native home in Morven, in the west coast. And it's recorded that it took him 10 days on horseback to come from Morven to Glasgow. 10 days. Now, those of us who know anything about Morven, though that it's still a very isolated part of the country, but 10 days to come to Glasgow. And when he came, he was part of the congregation here for some time without knowing that eventually he would become the minister of this church. So in amongst the historical notes, it also tells us that the original church was built and paid for from funds belonging to the congregation. The congregation selected their own pastor and paid his stipend. And consequently, 
St Columba was much more independent and in a favoured position compared with the majority of churches where the minister's stipend was paid by the heritors and in certain parts of the Highlands and Islands paid for by the laird and of course he who pays the piper thinks he can call the tune and that led to all sorts of disagreements culminating in the split in 1843 between what became the Free Church of Scotland. So Norman MacLeod coming in 1799, by 1836 he was the minister here. And of course 1836-37 there was famine. There was famine in the Highlands and Islands. Every bit as bad as the Irish potato famine and for the same reasons. But he set about using his enterprise and administrative capacity to relieve the distress. And I know I've said this before, but it amazes me. Every time I say it, I can't really believe it. I tell people when they come in to visit the church and they're always astonished. Due to his efforts in 1836-37, he raised 200,000 pounds, which is an absolutely astronomical sum. It's reckoned to be in the region of 85 million pounds today. And that is the reason that the famine was addressed by a Christian who applied practical Christianity. He didn't just sit and wring his hands and say, it's terrible, these people are starving. He set about addressing it. But of course, Norman MacLeod was a moderate, he was someone in the mainstream of the established church. So much so that St. Columba Gallic Church, which at that stage had moved to Hope Street, was known as the centre of moderatism. Centre of moderatism. And in 1843, when a whole lot of things were going on, a group of people set up an alternative service next door to his church in Hope Street. To try, try to dry off, uh, to uh, attract members of the congregation and to pull them out. Nobody went, everyone stayed. Norman MacLeod and his congregation stayed in the, in the kirk and we've been in the kirk ever since. But it is interesting that although I said earlier on, the church here, St. Columba Gallic Church, raised its own funds, built its own church and was much more independent than most congregations. In 1935, after the Union in 1929, there was a lot of changes in the church and the Church of Scotland passed an act that said that St. Columba Gallic Church had to hand over, not just their church, but all of their assets to a new group called the General Trustees. And they still hold these today. And in fact, two of the General Trustees will be visiting us on Wednesday for an update on our situation. Congregation will be very well aware that only due to an appeal were we able to continue. So, historical notes, but 100 years, 200 years, 250 years, is as or nothing in God's plan. And of course the story of Samuel and of David and Goliath, all these thousands of years ago, show that God works out his plan in his time scale and not in ours. An interesting note perhaps that <clears throat> at one stage in the late 1800s, there were over 900 children in the St. Columba Sunday School. We were talking about it earlier on, and it's fair to say it wasn't 900 children meeting in one place. St. Columba had various mission stations around the city. But 900 children and 91 Sunday School teachers, can you think of that? 91, absolutely incredible. Times have changed, congregations much smaller, but we are not alone. All of the congregations in the city have come down in size. 
But size isn't all that matters. It is a burning desire in all of us to tell the world about our Saviour and what he means to us and what he can mean to them. The story of David and Goliath is an important message to us to face your giants. Our giants are often seen here on a Sunday where we can't even get into the church because of various events happening round about where people don't attend church. People don't have any time for us. These are our giants and we have to address them. We have to show that we are still with the, the message from God <clears throat> and message of Jesus that he came, gave his life for us. So the Israelites in the story of David and Goliath were saying, look at how big Goliath is. He is much, much bigger than any of us. But David was saying, look how much smaller he is than our God. So David's faith in God vanquished his fear. And we must believe in a God who is able to do the same for us. God's protection is all I need. By my spirit, says the Lord, not intimidated by Goliath and his insults. If God is on your side, who can be against you? And I remember one of the missionaries that we used to have preaching here, I thought his line was excellent. He said, if God is on your side, you are in the majority. So even though the numbers are small, with God on our side, we are still in the majority. Because at the end of the day, these giants that we have to face, all of us, the final one is death. Death is the biggest giant that all of us have to face. Have to face. And of course, we have the answer. Jesus conquered death. So even that giant cannot frighten us. We shall overcome. Jesus has defeated death. And if God can defeat death, no other giant matters. And that's the lesson that we can take today from the story of David and Goliath. We're going to finish the, hymn, the service today by him. 479, who is on the Lord's side? 479.
heaven, help us to face our giants and with your help and assistance to overcome. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore.